Hey everyone, before we get into the meat of the matter, I just wanted to give you a quick heads up to let you know that the clip you're about to see of Pierre Polyev has been edited by myself just for the sake of brevity. I felt it just went on a little too long in its original form. And now here we go. Everyone meet Raquel. You'll never believe what she's done. We were trying to find a larger house that was affordable and it was not in Canada. And so we decided to move to Nicaragua. You moved to Nicaragua. It used to be that people would flee from countries like Nicaragua to come to Canada. But now people are actually fleeing from Canada to go to Nicaragua. Actually, in 2022, when we moved, um, 8,000 other Canadians had moved to Nicaragua as well. 8,000 yeah. for the same reasons? Like when you yeah, meet, when you meet them? Yeah, it's all like-minded people down there that are looking for a lower cost of living, Unbelievable. better quality of life. Tax, the tax. Okay, so what we're going to do in today's video is we are going to talk about the pros and cons of living in countries like Nicaragua and other developing nations. But right before we do that, two things. First of all, you might see the uh, horse in the uh, corner of the image there. That is one of Nicaragua's famous dancing horses. I'm telling you, you have to see these things in person. <laughs> They're a real kick to watch. And then the other thing I'm going to do is let you take a look at a clip of Minister Champagne responding responding to Pierre Polyev's interview with the lady who relocated to Nicaragua. Uh, Mr. Very well, Mr. Polyev is promoting the idea that some Canadians are leaving Canada to live in Nicaragua because Canada's broken, it's too expensive. What How do you ridiculous that would be. Honestly, I mean, Canada is the envy of the world. <laughs> yes, it just shows he is, I mean, honestly. How ridiculous that could be. Uh, Canada is the envy of the world. If you look, we're a big magnet for talent. You see people coming and coming. People come to study, people come to work, people come to live. Honestly, I mean, this whole narrative that is trying, why would people invest in Canada? Why people would choose to come to Canada? Why would people build families in Canada if that was the case? Let's, at, at certain stage, we have to stop that kind of of rhetoric which makes no sense, you know. To be honest, uh, I think we should be proud, we should be talking up Canada. And, and as Canadians and as leaders, we should talking up. I mean, who could be more optimistic than us as elected leader? I think it's a responsible and it just shows he is. Thank you for now, I'll be fully honest when it comes to this minister in particular. I do not like him. I feel he is smarmy beyond belief. I mean, he is such a runty little worm. And for him to call Canada the envy of the world, you know where that comes from? It comes from the same position that would allow him to say it is a privilege for him as an MP to talk up life in Canada. Of course. Do you know how much Minister Champagne makes? Over $200,000 a year. On top of that, many people aren't aware of this, but a lot of his daily costs are covered by a per diem. So he doesn't have to spend as much of his salary as you do yours to cover his dailies. So of course he's going to be in a position of saying that Canada is the envy of the world and that everybody should live here because from his perspective, everybody's living the 200 grand a year lifestyle. On to the pros and cons. Let's start with the cons, okay? Let's get the bad out of the way first. Nicaragua, I've been there. Yes, as gorgeous as it is, there is a lot of government corruption going on there. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Ortegas. It's a long-standing political dynasty there led by Daniel Ortega, who's presently in power. These guys are corrupt beyond belief. Now, I know we love to rag on Trudeau. And yes, I am very much convinced that Trudeau is indeed a corrupt individual. He is not, however, anywhere close to being as corrupt as the Ortega family. So if you have your doubts about that, do some research and you'll see. These guys are dirty as dirty gets. Now, some of the cons you will have to prepare yourself for is the amount of poverty. If you were to move there as a Canadian and benefit from the superior rate of exchange, well, that comes at a cost. You will have to be exposed to other people's poverty. So if you're very sensitive to that, especially when that poverty extends to children, because I'm telling you right now, you will inevitably see children doing things like picking through garbage or begging for change in the streets. So if you think that's hard, you might not want to go there because you will encounter that and it will be difficult. So you've got political corruption and you've got the poverty. You'd also be advised to take the necessary precautions against crime because there is a lot of crime. And if you go down there and you're not the same skin color, you will stand out making you a prime target. Let's take a look at a couple of homes here. The first home 
is actually both of the homes I picked out are situated in a town called Lyon, which is really beautiful down in Nicaragua, very colonial. And as you can see from this first house, 80 grand, you get two bedrooms and two bathrooms and you get to wake up and go to bed in a nice, very warm place. It never gets cold there. It's such an amazing ambience, especially in the evenings when you can hear some of the wildlife out in the background. And then you have another home in Leon, and then this one's going for 55 grand. And once again, you're getting two bedrooms and two bathrooms. Now, the one thing that this $55,000 one has over the other one, aside from the price difference, is that it's inside of a secured gated community. You have armed guards patrolling and keeping your neighborhood safe. That is a huge plus. Now, Nicaragua is not the only place that's offering you a good deal. I'm not sure if you've ever checked out what's going on in the Philippines, but if not, here's a two-bedroom house. As you can see, it has a price tag of 1.4 million Philippine pesos. I know you don't like hearing the term million associated with real estate anymore, but I can tell you right now, there's a fundamental difference between a Filipino million and a Canadian million. And this is the difference. You see here, not even $33,000. All right, you can get yourself two bedroom house in a nice part of the Philippines for not even 33 grand. Isn't that insane? And now here you have this Canadian minister who's trying to tell you that Canada is the envy of the world, that we should be talking it up. Yeah. No thanks, buddy. Not all of us have an interest to run for politics, even though that salary is pretty nice. So next time you hear any dissenting voices when it comes to life in these developing nations, make sure you check to see who it's coming from. In the case of Mr. Champagne, it's coming from the perspective of someone who's earning over 200 grand a year and is also getting a large part of his daily costs subsidized by per diem. So he doesn't have to touch all of that 200 grand the same way you have to touch your salary to cover your daily costs. It's insane. If you agree with anything in here or if you oppose it, let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and if you haven't done so already, please do consider subscribing to the channel.